I gotta warn you before we start. The video you're about to watch will look a lot like a sponsored video, but I promise it isn't one. Cloudflare, a company that many of you know only for their CDN services, has quietly and slowly been building a developer platform that I believe is a maker's dream. The only platform a full stack developer needs. I know those are pretty big claims and I know I need to back them up, which is what this video is about. Today, we're going to take a tour of Cloudflare's developer platform, a platform many developers are sleeping on and missing out on. Take any big service, Instagram, Tinder, Slack, or X, and break it down. They are all composed of many different technologies and moving parts. They all use databases, caching, queues, compute, cron job, real-time features, media assets, user uploads, video streaming, emails, and more. And these days, AI. Building something with these things will have you reaching for multiple technologies and services across different providers. EC2 servers, RDS databases, Redis caches, RabbitMQQs, S3 buckets, recent for emails, MOOCs for video streaming, and so on and so forth. There is nothing wrong with this if you have the money and time to install, configure, maintain, and integrate them all. But if you want to build faster, you don't want to spend money before getting your first customer, and want a unified API and developer experience, consider Cloudflare. That's because, to the surprise of many, the Cloudflare developer platform has all of those things I just mentioned and more. Yes, they have databases. Yes, they have caching. Yes, they have queues. Yes, they have compute. Yes, they have containers. Yes, they have cron job. Yes, they even have a kit to build real-time experiences like Discord and another kit to build real-time AI agents. Yes, they have a ton of stuff. It's insane. This is a good time to remind you this is not a sponsored video. Although I wish it was. If you work for Cloudflare, call me. I would gladly accept Cloudflare stocks as a gift. Now, we don't have time to go over each product deeply because there are so many. So I will give you a quick overview to the ones that you as a developer will care about the most. Here's what we will cover. Compute, databases, caching, queues, cron jobs, containers, file storage, real time, emails, and last but not least, AI. Compute. Compute is provided by Cloudflare Workers, a serverless platform that allows you to run a piece of TypeScript, JavaScript, or Rust code on Cloudflare's network and expose it as a URL to the world. To create a worker, all you have to do is run this command in your console. Select the language you want to use and you're good to go. That will create a folder with two very important files, index.ts and wrangler.jsonc. Index.ts is the entry point of your worker and wrangler.jsonc is the configuration file of your worker. Taking a look at index.ts, we can see that it exports an object with a fetch function. That fetch function is the one that will be called when the worker is invoked through the URL. What many people do, including me, is to use a framework for Cloudflare workers that takes care of routing and responses and saves you a ton of time. That framework is called Hono. So after installing Hono, we can replace the code in index.ts with this code that I'm sure will look much more familiar to you. And that's it. You are now running code on the cloud. You don't have to use Hono, of course. You could deploy a Next.js, Remix, Svelte app, and it will work just fine. Something to know is that your code runs in a JavaScript runtime, not Node.js. Most NPM packages work fine, but some won't, especially those needing Node.js specific APIs. That said, Workers has compatibility flags and supports many Node.js APIs out of the box. And spoiler alert, if there is something you need to run that does not fit the serverless environment of Workers, like let's say compressing videos with FFmpeg, or something that needs to run in a Linux-like environment, you can use a Cloudflare container. More on that later. Pricing-wise, Workers is free. You get 100,000 free requests per day. And if you pay a subscription of $5 a month, you get 10 million requests per month. Compute, check. Databases. And now that we have compute, we need a place to store our data. For this, we have Cloudflare D1, a serverless database built on top of SQLite. And before you say anything, no, SQLite is not a toy database. It's one of the greatest pieces of software ever written. And it's perfectly fine to use for most projects that you and me will build. I made a whole video about the SQLite awesomeness. So go and check it out after this video. To create a database, we need to run this Wrangler command. Wrangler, by the way, is the CLI for Cloudflare workers. This command will give you something like this to copy paste into your wrangler.jsonc file. By default, when in development mode, Wrangler will use a local SQLite database. If you want to use the one in your Cloudflare account, just set remote to true. There we can see the database ID and the database name. What's important to use is the binding property. Binding is the name of the variable that will be available in our worker to access the database. So with my DB as our binding, we can access the database from our worker with env.myDB like this. In the Cloudflare dashboard, you can run database queries to apply migration to your data and more. And if you don't like writing SQL queries directly, you can use Drizzle ORM or Prisma. They both work with D1. Pricing-wise, D1 scales to zero, meaning if you are not running queries, you are not getting built for compute. The free tier gives you 5 million rows per day and 100,000 rows written per day. And if you are already in the $5 workers plan, you get 25 billion rows read and 50 million rows written per month. Databases, check. 
caching. And now that we have compute and a database, we need a cache, useful for expensive queries and data you read often, like authentication details. For this, we have Cloudflare KV, a global low latency key value database. To bind your worker to a KV namespace, run this Wrangler command. This command will give you something like this to copy paste into your Wrangler JSON.C file. Again, the binding is what we will use to access the KV database from our worker. Now we could, for example, check if the users are in the cache before hitting the database. If they are, we return them from the cache, else we hit the database and save the users to the cache. Now, let's talk about pricing. The free tier gives you 100,000 keys read per day, 1,000 keys written per day, and one gigabyte of storage. And if you're already in the $5 workers plan, you get a 10 million read keys per month, 1 million written per month, and one gigabyte of storage. Caching, check. Queues. Queues are useful when you have a task that you want to perform asynchronously. For example, sending a welcome email when a user signs up. You don't want to wait for the email to be sent before creating the account. Instead, you create the user account quickly, and then use a queue to send a welcome email later. For this, we have Cloudflare queues. Queues have two sides. The producer adds elements and the consumer processes them and removes them. First, we'll create a queue. You could have one worker as the consumer and another one as the producer, or you can have one worker that does both. To make our worker be both, after running this command, we will add this to our Wrangler JSON.C file. And once again, the binding is what we will use to access the queue from our worker. Here is an example of handling a slash create account route. We create the user account and then enqueue a welcome email by sending a message to the queue. Then we modify our code a little bit to export a function called queue. That function will be called by Cloudflare when there are messages in the queue. It receives a batch of messages. There we can process each message, send an email, and then acknowledge the message so that it is removed from the queue. The important thing is that this runs later. The user doesn't wait for the email to be sent. The code that processes the queue messages may as well run in another region. It doesn't matter. As you can see, queue consumers also have access to the A and B object, which means we can use databases, KV, and other bindings. Queues check. Cron jobs. Cron jobs are useful when you want to run a task at a specific time or interval, like sending an email every morning at 8 a.m. or deleting all notifications twice a month in your database. To set up a cron job, we add a triggers section to our Wrangler's JSONC file with a cron expression. With that cron expression, Cloudflare will call our worker every Monday to Friday at 3.10 a.m. To handle the call, we export a function called scheduled where we have access to the END object, which means we can use databases, KV, and other bindings. Cron jobs, check. Containers. Containers are a fairly new product in the Cloudflare developer platform. They fix the biggest pain that made people avoid building projects with workers. They are basically Docker containers that you can run in Cloudflare's network without managing any servers. They are spun up on demand and they are controlled from your worker's code, which means that if there is something you need to run that doesn't fit the worker serverless environment, like running a Python script, a Java program, whatever it is, you can put it on a container and call it from your worker. To create a container, we add a containers section to our wrangler.jsonc file. There, we specify the the Docker file that will be used to create the container and the maximum number of instances that can run at the same time. The most important thing to remember is the class name. That is the name of the JavaScript class that will be used to interact with the container from our worker. To use the container from our worker, we have to create and export a class with that same name in our worker. There, we specify what port the container will be listening on and after how long it should sleep. Now, when a user makes a post request to slash process video, our worker gets a container instance using a unique ID and forwards the request to it. The container handles the heavy processing like compressing a video with FFmpeg and returns the result. And that's it. You now have server full code being called by your server less code. Containers, check. File storage. Now, let's talk about file storage. User uploads, images, videos, documents, podcasts, the backups, you name it. For this, we have Cloudflare R2, an S3 compatible object storage with zero egress fees. That means you can store your files on R2 and access them as much as you want without paying for bandwidth. To create a bucket, we run this Wrangler command and then we bind it to our worker in the wranglers.jsonc file. Now we can use R2 from our worker to upload and download files. R2 is S3 compatible, which means you can use it with any tool that works with S3. Pricing-wise, R2 charges for storage at $0.015 per gigabyte per month. The free tier gives you 10 gigabytes of storage, 1 million write operations, and 10 million read operations per month. And remember, no egress fees. A thousand users downloading a 10 gigabyte video will cost you $0 in bandwidth. Just like a thousand users downloading a one megabyte image. Insane. File storage, 
check real time now real time applications if you want to build a chat app or a multiplayer game a collaborative editing tool like figma anything where multiple users interact in real time you need durable objects durable objects are workers that remember things they have persistent storage attached to them which means you can keep data between requests unlike regular workers that forget everything once they're done each durable object has a unique id which means you can address specific objects from anywhere in the world and they're perfect for coordinated multiple clients that need to work together to use a durable object we bind it to our worker in wrangler.jsonc. The class name is the name of the JavaScript class that defines the durable object behavior. And the binding is what we use to access it from our worker. Now let's create a durable object class and use it from our Hono worker. For example, a real-time view counter that shows how many people are currently viewing a page. First, we create our durable object class, which extends durable object and has a constructor that initializes the viewer count to zero. Then from our Hono worker, we get the page ID from the URL. Use it to get a unique durable object instance for that page and call the get viewers method to see how many people are viewing it. Then we add a viewer to the page and return the number of viewers. Durable objects are just a class, but one that is stored across CloudSource network and stays alive for as long as needed. They are incredibly powerful. Real time? check emails and last but not least emails if you're building an application you need to send emails welcome messages password resets notifications invoices all that cluster has email sending which is currently in private beta to send an email you just add the binding to your worker and call send no api keys to manage no secrets to leak just a binding email sending will require the worker's paid plan and you will be charged based on the number of emails sent emails coming soon Check. AI. And of course, AI. Cloudflare has Workers AI, which lets you run AI models directly from your worker. No API keys, no external services, just a binding. You can run text generation models, image classification, embeddings, speech recognition, text to image, and more. To use Workers AI, you bind it to your worker in Wrangler.jsonc. Then you can call any model from your worker. For example, we can use Llama to generate text. Workers AI has dozens of models available, from text generation to image classification, embeddings, translations, and more. And because it's on CloudFirst Network is fast and globally distributed. AI, check. And that's it. We have covered compute, databases, caching, queues, cron jobs, containers, file storage, real-time applications, emails, and AI. All of this on one platform, with one CLI, with one unified developer experience. And for the last time, this isn't a sponsored video. I just think it's a great platform and I want to share it with you. Let me know in the comments what do you think about Cluster Developer's platform. And if you're already using it, what are you building? There are other products that I didn't cover like Real-Time Kit or Workflows to build AI agents. So let me know if you want me to cover them in a future video. As always, thank you for watching. Until now, See you in the next one. Happy to talk. Bye bye.